I'm Lois Wang from Fog Bank Entertainment. Uh, so for the next presentation, with no overdue, uh, Grayson Chalmer has been one of the veteran. You guys see his faces on the advisory board for a long time. He's always very generous in sharing his experience on new tool, uh, new re research, or new method to really making the art outsourcing management easier for whether internal team or uh, external vendors. Um, so he's going to share his experience with uh, the out-of-box shotgun uh, with anyone who is interested. Um, so let's give a pause for Grayson. <laughs> Hi, everyone. All right, so today we're going to be talking about uh, stylized assets at warp speed. Um, just to give a quick introduction about uh, the three, we're going to be talking about three topics in particular. So the first one, a lot of the meat of this is going to be uh, shotgun. Again, uh, what Lois mentioned, we're going to be covering sort of some tips and tricks from, from out-of-the-box shotgun that if anyone here is considering you know, using shotgun or maybe they're using it already, um, hopefully some things that will help speed up your process. Uh, maybe make it more effective. Uh, dailies is the next topic. Um, I've seen, so dailies is, is an effective way to help give feedback in a very sort of a fast and efficient way, and we'll talk some about that. And then the last one is sort of notes to Pastor Grayson. Uh, things that, looking back, uh, what would I change going forward? Sort of w with my question with Jeff, where it's like, what's next? These are the kind of things that I would tell my future self <laughs> and, my, and my past self. Quick coverage of my background, so I worked on everything from Area 51, DC Universe, uh, Army of Two, Overwatch, and League of Legends, and Fortnite. All right, so let's jump in. So uh, on the shotgun side, uh, the first part is how it's structured. I think there's a lot of, when you first get introduced to shotgun, it's sort of very scary visually. Um, but I just want to cover a quick, so a lot of you guys might know this if you use shotgun already. You can structure it in a few different ways, but basically the top level entity can be a level. Um, and again, I'm talking about this from a perspective of game development. Um, there's lots of other ways to use shotgun. Obviously, it sort of came from the film background, so there's other ways of setting up that, that way. But um, what I've seen a lot in the past is basically level is the top, is the top sort of entity. Under that, you have the assets that you're actually building. Um, you can link assets between each other, so if you're making multiple assets that are all related to one, you can make sure they're linked together. And then under that is the actual tasks, high poly, low poly, all that sort of. Um, and then finally is the, ver is the versions or basically the art that you're submitting into the system for review and uh, for tracking. And the cool part is you can attach notes to all of that. Uh, so it's very handy to, you can attach status notes, you can attach feedback notes, um, but they can be attached to sort of any, any entity inside of Shotgun. Shotgun for visibility. So this is where we kick off into um, a live demo. So what I'm going to do is we're going to cover a few different topics for this first one. We're going to cover dashboards, sort of a roll-up of information, how you can get a general sense of health of your project, how things, how things are moving along. We're going to cover filters and groups, the way you can filter that data, the way you can group it, um, so you can make it look a little less visually terrifying. Um, fields is another good one, so you can have Custom fields, you can, there's a whole bunch of existing fields, how to use them, um, and how to make sure all that, uh, you're tracking the right kind of data for your project. Uh, and then conditional formatting. This is another good one for me, I think, to help sort of remove the, the big, scary, um, you know, when you first look at Shotgun, it's very, it, there's a lot of data. Uh, so I think any way to sort of simplify it and make the important parts jump out at you is, is very helpful. All right, so the first one we're going to talk about is um, is dashboards. And so this is an example dashboard. And again, I'm using uh, vanilla shotgun. Um, this is straight out of the box. I'm even using the, the demo, as you can see here. But so this is uh, an example of a roll-up page. It's basically, there's a few different kind of pages you can make, but one of them is called a canvas page. And in a canvas page, you can fill it with widgets. Uh, and these widgets can be all sorts of different uh, ways of rolling up your data. It can be graphs. It can be uh, grid views. Um, that, that will help sort of give you a general sense of the, of the full project and, and help you make sure that you're keeping an eye on everything uh, that's happening. Um, let's see. Oh, and the other cool part that I really like about a lot of the shotgun widgets is that they're all very, um, they're sort of interactive. Um, so I see here I've got six, I've got four assets that are pending review. The cool part is I can actually click that and without leaving that page, it pops up a window and then shows you what um, what assets are in for review. Um, so the cool part is, in, 
in most situations, so usually this pops up and then basically what you can do is you get a, a grid view very similar to what you see down here of, of, the, of the assets that are pending review. And you can click on them, you can enter that entity and see what the history was of that, of that asset. Um, next, uh, for, the, for this view, you can even, um, some, of the, some of the widgets even have the ability to filter real time. So let's say looking at this one down here, so I can roll over, I can see, and, and again, I can click it and pop up and it'll show me what assets are uh, in progress and what assets are final. But if I wanted to filter it real time, I can click the little buttons at the bottom and filter out everything but what's final. And then, it's like, and then I can say, okay, I've got four levels, I've got three levels in progress with only one, with only one asset uh, that's final. I should probably go ask some questions and figure out what's happening there. Um, let's see, the other cool part about uh, these widgets to help broadcast this information out to folks, um, you can, well there's two parts. One is you can expand, expand the view and then you can get a better understanding, you can get a bigger view of what you're talking about. Um, and then at the same time, what you can also do is if you want to broadcast information out, you can actually click on, on this little uh, sort of this down arrow and you can show the source data. You can show all the data this is pulling from. You can save it as an image and you can attach it to an email. Um, you can even export all the data into a CSV or a JSON. So you can even, if you wanted to do something fancy with it, you could bring it to Excel and then, uh, and, and then filter it and do different things from there if for, for whatever reason uh, Shotgun doesn't have the feature that you want. And then you can even print it when it's basically the same thing as, as saving it out. Um, I think that's it for that. So the next uh, one we're gonna cover is filters and groups. Um, so I, what I've done is I've switched over. So in Shotguns, there's different sort of tabs. This is the project dashboard. This is the level entities that I was talking about. There's the assets. Uh, there's task entities, uh, versions. Uh, there's the notes that I mentioned. And then we'll get into playlists and media that gets more into the feedback uh, side of things. So I'll jump over into the, the levels tab. And inside the levels tab, what we can do is to, uh, actually, you know what? I think we're gonna do, the, maybe the assets is a slightly better way to show this. So what I have here is a grid view uh, of looking at all the assets in the project. And they're grouped into basically the different um, asset types. There's animation, there's audio, there's characters. And, all right. Um, so you can collapse them all by clicking uh, the alt click on the group. Um, so it collapses them all quickly. Um, you can filter for a single level, so I'll show you quickly how filters work. So filters on the right side here. Uh, in filters, you can filter for any type of data that you have uh, attached to your entity, to your asset entity. So I can filter by one of the, um, one of the data points attached to uh, an asset is a level. And so what I can do is I can say only filter by level number three, and it'll only show me everything in, in level number three. There's, and it shows you there's five assets in that. If I click this, it'll only show me um, level one. Um, and even in the top right, this helps me a lot too, is that you can open the filter page, but as soon as you click off it, it disappears. If you open it and then click, there's a tiny little button, it's a little bit hard to see, um, but that attaches it to, to the side so that you don't have to re reopen it every time and you can click off and continue using it. If you wanna filter by something else, another piece of data, uh, it's right in here. Uh, okay, so now let's say, we, instead of filtering by each level, we want it to group by each level. Um, so another thing you can do is, so right now it's grouped by, by asset type. What we can change that is to group by level. And so this gives us another view of basically saying, no matter what the asset type is, it connects to each level. So I can just collapse and expand each level, and I can see that I've got a test asset down here. Why is that not attached to a level? Um, then you can fix that in the assignments just right over here. Um, we'll talk about mass editing uh, and stuff like that in a little bit. Um, and you'll see some colors here. We'll talk about that's part of the conditional formatting that we'll cover soon as well. So a lot of these are in progress. There's, let's switch one of these, let's switch a few of these over to uh, final, just as an example. And then what we can do is we can actually filter out by things that are not final. So what I can say here is this, little, this tiny little thing says is, and I can say I can filter out things that are only final, but then I can flip this and say only things that are not final. And so again, this is very helpful for like controlling the flow of data into your, you know, into your review so that you're only looking at the things that you wanna look at. And again, it's a lot of, it's a lot of uh, information that's hitting you uh, at the same time. And some of it sometimes, I've heard a lot of sort of artist feedback. It's like, there's just so much. It's, it's, 
it's overwhelming. So, and don't be afraid. What you can do is even in your columns, you can right click and you can hit hide column. So if there's something that doesn't make sense to view at this moment in this view, you can make all sorts of different views to, to customize it for what you want or what the artist wants. And so be very aggressive uh, in terms of talking with your art team and making sure that you're building a view for the art team that, that, they, you know, that, that they feel comfortable with. Um, so fields we'll talk about in the versions tab. So again, I just preloaded this, but I'm switched over to the versions tab up here. Um, so versions, um, it's Shotgun's uh, terminology for just the art that's submitted to the project. I, I think most of you guys know that one. But what we're going to do here is, and this sounds a little bit silly, but one of the things I really like is you can, ha you can right click on a column, you can go under format, and you can ha have double tall headers. So in a situation where maybe I want to collapse, or I want to sort of roll up a column like that, um, but I, I want to get a little bit more of what the title of the column is, just go under uh, format, and then uh, display double tall headers, and it gives you just a little bit more room up top. Um, but it's not that way by default, um, so it's sometimes it's pretty handy to have, have visible. Uh, another column that I like to have is open notes. So in adding, columns to a, in adding columns to a view, you can add any data that's attached to the kind of entity that you're looking at. Right now we're looking at versions, and I can have columns for any data that attached to versions. One of my favorites is open notes. You can have, um, there's open notes and there's open notes count. And open notes count is actually, uh, I like it a little bit better. So here you can see open notes. It actually gives me the title of the note and I can click on that and open it up. But I like open note uh, count. If I open this up a little bit more, there it is. It's the same idea, but if there's multiple notes, it, again, it's that floating window that I really love and you don't have to load another page. You can just open it up. Here's the note. Here's the, here's the status. Um, and I can, even, I can even click straight to the, the subject or straight to the, the version that was submitted. Um, so you can get a, a very quick view of, of, what, uh, of what's happening there and what, the, what sort of the action items need, need to be for that one. Um, let's see. So the next one is version count on tasks. So on tasks, let's move back over to that. So what we can do is there is a way to add so what I've done is I've created a, a custom uh, field called version count. So what I've done here is a lot of these are zeros, but there's a couple here that mention two versions. So again, what this does is it's a custom query field that queries the uh, task for any uh, for any open for how whatever many versions have been submitted. So this is a really quick way of getting to what assets have been submitted to that asset that you're working on. And again, you can get at this in different ways. I could click into this uh, task. I can see the version submitted sort of through the task page. Um, but I think it's a whole lot quicker to basically just you can add a custom column. So when you go uh, when you go to add a column on this side. Manage field test, and you can add a new field. So I've added this query field that exists right here. So basically what happens, I can go to query. I can say that anything, uh, so what I really want to do is open, what do we say, versions. So I want to display versions that the task is the current task. And so what that'll do is it'll show me a single, uh, Actually, we can do version count, and that's, I think that's more what we want. In some situations, you can say a single version, like if you just wanted to see a thumbnail of the latest version, you could say single. Um, but version count is cool because you can just get that, again, that list of, 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 the, thing, of the versions that are attached to that, that task. And again, you can do this with anything. You can do this with notes. You can do this with the number of tasks that are attached to a level. You can, you can query for anything in here, and it's super powerful. Don't be afraid to get in here and experiment and see what sort of fits for you and, and fits with your, with your project. Um, but there's a lot of power in here, and it's a little bit scary when you first look at it. Um, but really, at the end of the day, like, it can give you some very powerful features that boil down to you being able to look at a column and say, oh, look, there's two versions. And you pull pop up a window, and, and there they are. Um, Thumbnails are controlled by the column width, so you can expand and contract those. So sometimes I like to keep the thumbnails in there and then shrink them down way small. That way you can get a, a slightly more manageable view. And then if you're interested in what's happening, you can open it back up. And you can even click directly on the thumbnail, and that will take you directly to the version page. And it will show you any notes associated with that. That's super handy as well. Um, but again, you know, that's loading a new page. This is, I like the pop-ups. I think they're, they're fun and fast. Um, so we covered, let's see, we covered custom stuff. Um, version thumbnail on note. So let's see. So versions. 
what we could do is on, so in the same thing, oh, I sort of covered it at the same time. Honestly, what you can do is in that same query field, so instead of just querying for uh, open notes or, um, or version submitted, you can just query for the latest um, version that's submitted to your project. Um, and that will give you, and again, it's about bringing the data forward and, and showcasing it in a way that makes sense to, to, to your product. Um, so conditional formatting. So this was, I think the best way to show that is going to be inside of levels. So here we go. So what I want to be able to see is, uh, actually, let's use, let's use this one. We're going to use assets. So what we can do is in the, on the assets page, so here's all the tasks associated with it. Um, if I'm looking, if I'm looking to see like what's overdue and what do I need to like, what do I need to investigate? Um, and again, there's lots of data being presented to you here. You can filter it in different ways. But I, I like also having um, conditional formatting to help you sort of parse through the data. And again, this is uh, done through right clicking in the column. You can go to conditional formatting. And so in the task page, you get a nice Gantt chart of when your, your stuff is due. Um, I'm not yet filtering by what is in progress or what is complete yet. Um, but what you can do is you can right click, you can go to conditional formatting, change. Um, so we're going to change the color of the background with rules. And so I've set up two here. The first one is uh, overdue. So really, this is again, it's another query that you can set up. So I'm saying, show me anything that has a due date before today. Show me the status uh, that is not final. Uh, and that's, and then what that'll do is it gives me, and then I can set the color and I can have it be you know, any sort of uh, formatting that I want. And the second one I did is, is due soon. I like this one a lot. Basically, it just says the due date that's in the next seven days. So this is when I get on a, a call with the, an external team. I say, hey, you know, this one's coming up pretty quick. These assets are coming up pretty quick. Um, are you ready? You know, does, is that going to, are you going to be able to deliver that on time? Uh, so I think that one's, that one's super, super handy. And again, you can conditional format by anything. You can turn the entire background uh, white if it's a different you know, phase of the process. Um, it's really sort of uh, open to, it has a lot of power in it. Uh, and again, it's, it's about sim simplifying it and bringing the information that you want to the, to the foreground. We're going to move on to uh, shotgun and production. So we're going to cover a few different points here. And again, between, instead of splitting them up into uh, a bunch of different sections, uh, we're going to talk about Importing and exporting your data. Shotgun's an awesome tool, uh, but at the same time, sometimes uh, we like, uh, I would like to kick it out into Excel and do sort of deeper dives on the data, or maybe you're using um, you know, other analytics software. Um, import export helps with that. Uh, mass editing tasks or, or notes or anything, mass editing is very helpful. Um, task templates is another good one. If you're setting up um, if you're setting up an asset and you know that every single environment asset needs these certain tasks, um, you don't have to input those manually. You can have a task template that helps you automate that process. Um, linked assets uh, are helpful as well. I mentioned that earlier. You can say, okay, well, this, is, this character also has a weapon and a hat and a few other things connected to it. Um, we'll talk about viewing the history of, of things, which is very helpful to say, oh, the due date of this change, when did it change and who changed it? Uh, that's very helpful. Event logs are sort of connected to that. You can see when you can be notified about when something happened. And the last one is playlists. And playlists is going to be the heart of, of sort of the dailies and art asset review process. So I think that's a big one. Uh, so import export. So what you can do really with any, any view, any data set, what you're filtering here, I can literally just right click on more and I can hit import or export tasks. I can export to a CSV and I can import the tasks as well. The importing is very cool. You can literally just copy and paste or drag your file into, uh, into Shotgun, and it, and it loads all the data that you have in that CSV straight from Excel into, uh, into Shotgun. So if you have an asset list that you're passing back and forth between designers, and you're like, yes, we finally got the, the, the final asset list for this level. We're ready to go. We're ready to pull the trigger. You have that Excel sheet. You can literally just copy and paste it into here. You can include things like task templates to help you build out, the, to help you build out the, the, your work. Um, mass editing is another good one. So let's say um, we have a, uh, a bunch of assets that we need to change the, the start date for. Or let's say we're going to change the, uh, let's see, in this situation, let's change the assigned to. Uh, so what we can do is we can just highlight. I'm just holding down shift. I'm highlighting several. And there's two ways to mass edit. So one is right clicking and on a certain column and editing only that column. So I can say, I can add, overwrite, or remove assignees to this. 
So all I got to do is type, so I can assign these all to me. I'll overwrite anything that's in there, hit save, and there it is. And that's at, at mass editing them all at once. That's it, but it's just editing the assigned to. If I wanted to do more than just uh, editing that one column, edit selected, here we go. So in this window, you can edit more properties on that task at the same time. So I can edit this, if I, if I want to edit the due date, I can set the due date for all those tasks to be the same. I can edit, let's say, I'm going to turn that off, I won't edit that. But let's say I wanted to make the, all the duration five days and I wanted to change the assignee to, you know, I just wanted to remove it, remove the assignee. And you can also add fields to, to edit, but basically you can do multiple edits at the same time. And let's say I'm going to, you know, change all the statuses to something else. Um, but you can do mass edits to multiple columns at the same time and hit save. Takes a minute, and then it wiped, it wiped out uh, my assignee, and it uh, changed the durations all at the same time. So instead of clicking twice, it just helps you sort of smooth out the, the process a bit. All right, uh, task templates. Um, so what we can do uh, here, so task templates live in, so let's go to, so this is one of our tasks. So this is the, so inside here is a link to the task. So here is uh, one of my, let's take one of these tasks. So this is a, an asset that, is, that has tasks into it. So there's concept art, there's modeling, and there's texturing. Um, if I were to make a new uh, task, so let's take what we can do here is when I create a task, you can set up a task template. And I can say, oops, there's the task name, test task. And then I can put a task template. Um, I can assign the art and polish. And so when I create that, it will create a task. So when I go into that task, it will have, um, it will have the assets already test task. Where did it go? Versions. Let me try that one more time. So we're in versions, assets. Here we go. So I'll make an asset, test asset. And then task template is going to be there it is. Okay, so a small props test, test template, hit submit, and what'll happen is, so here's the one I just made. Uh, inside of that is already all of the, the properties, the tasks that I assigned or that I set up beforehand. And the cool part is you can even set up temporary ones where you can assign it directly to, a, to an external team. So if I'm doing a big batch of work that's going to one external team, I can set that up in the task template and assign it to the task and it, and it does a lot of the work for me and I don't have to set up all these individual ones, which is awesome. All right, the next one is uh, view history. This one's a really cool one because you can see what changed and when. So if you right click on any uh, column, you can say view the history of this asset. View the history of sort of that data point. So I can see that Grayson did some changes very early in the morning uh, to this, th to this uh, task. And then this will come in important later. This is called an event type. Um, and we're going to filter for event types later, which is, which is awesome, um, so that we can see, we can get a sort of a visual, we can get a notification of, what, uh, of what's happening. Uh, but it's, I think it's very handy so you can see, oh, hey, so-and-so changed the date. I'm going to go talk to that person to find out like, why it changed and the context behind it. Events log. So connected to that, on the dashboard, I actually had set up a, an event log uh, widget. So it's basically a grid view. That shows me all of the events. I'm filtering by, and again, you'll recognize that shotgun task change. And this is all of the tasks that have changed uh, you know, in the last whatever. You can filter for anything you want. Be careful down here at the bottom. You can show how many you want to, to view at any one time. And so if you start to go big numbers, there's a thousand events, and it'll, it'll bog the system down. So keep that as small as you can. Um, but the cool part is, I can take a look at this every morning and say, oh, look, these, these 12 assets, the date changed or the status changed. Or you, know, you can get a quick view of sort of what uh, the, the temperature of the project while you're looking at your dashboard. Uh, so I think that's super helpful to monitor the, uh, the event log. All right, so let's get into, let's get into playlists really quick. Uh, so playlists are a, uh, any assets that's submitted to Shotgun that's attached to, that's attached to a task. You know, I'm working on the modeling, I submit an asset, or I submit a, a version. Uh, what you can do is you can take uh, a list, you can take, so in, under my versions um, tab, I can take all of these, I can highlight them all, and I can attach them to a playlist. So I can say, add to new playlist, 
I can enter the name of a playlist. And what this does is it takes all of those things that are ready for review. So like even on my dashboard page, this would be, this is a great way to use the dashboard page. So let's say there's a bunch pending review. I can click that. Yes, they're working now. All right, so I literally clicked anything that's ready for review. So in that widget, so here's the version status, pending review. I open up pending review. It pops up the window. I can highlight all of these and do the same exact thing that I just did. Uh, and, all right, we'll start with those two. So we can just say add to new playlist. And again, name the playlist. It, and it makes it basically just a, a playlist of those files. Then what you do is you come over into the media tab. And again, this is just another tab in the, uh, on the top level here, and you can customize what you show up here. I've added the media tab. And inside here is a, is a playlist section. So this is a playlist that I made of that. In here, you can, re, uh, you can order them any way that makes sense for you, whatever way you want to order them. And then, um, let's see, go to playlist uh, in the screen. OK, cool. So then when you're ready to review, there's going to there's gonna be two things that happen. There's going to be the first one um, where you are displaying the work. So in here, it's going to load the playlist, and it's going to be basically a timeline of all of the assets that are ready for review. So it automatically plays, and you can, you can, you can stop on one. You can, you, know, you can really sort of analyze it. You can take a look at it. And then you can flip between the different uh, the versions in your playlist. And the cool part is we'll talk about this when we talk about dailies really quickly. Um, I want to be respectful of time. But uh, when you're sitting there in dailies, you're literally just flipping through all these, all these art assets and quickly giving the feedback. So as this is on screen, this is up, up on screen in front of all the art directors and everything, at the same time, there's, this, uh, there's an app called Review Notes app. Um, and so on the side, the, produce, the producers will be sitting in the room next to, uh, next to the art directors and art leads, taking notes on each version. We'll talk about broadcasting this in a little bit, and you can customize uh, the data that's viewed here. So I'm, I'm showing that this is a texture task uh, for the metal container. And I'm also, I also added this uh, piece of data here that you can display. Like This is the due date for that task. So it's really cool to be sitting there going, OK, here's the submission. When's it due? What does it look like? What's the feedback? All in one view. And you can be taking notes real time. Um, but basically, we'll talk about broadcasting those notes app in a bit when we talk about dailies. But it, it makes it really simple. Um, and again, you know, shot, Shotgun is, has a lot of power to it. No tool is perfect. Um, but it's about finding the right tool for your, your project and your, and your team. All right, so I think we've covered a lot about Shotgun. Uh, sorry I got a little bit technical, but I think there's a lot of power to it. And I think a lot of people are scared of uh, you know, It seems to, to, to me, I know when I first looked into it, you know, it, it looked very visually intimidating. Um, so I think we're going to dive back into uh, dive back into the presentation. We're going to talk a little bit about dailies. Um, oh, Shotgun Logistics, right before we go, uh, right before we leave Shotgun. So the biggest thing is, in any tool that you're going to have, you're going to need internal support. Like, who's going to be the admins for it? Who's going to control permissions? Um, how are the artists going to submit their assets? Uh, permissions we just talked about. Um, and then Shotgun has an extensive API. If you wanted to connect it to any of your existing software, it has that ability. But again, do you have the engineers to do that? Do you have the support network to, to implement this? And again, you know, I'm using this as an example from Shotgun. Uh, but, but really, if you're, if you're doing Jira or you're doing anything, just make sure you're, you take into account the sort of the full uh, support network for that. Um, so the one thing I will show, uh, actually, uh, back in Shotgun, is the ability to view things as you're setting up permissions. I find this super, super, super helpful. The ability to view as another user. So in any page, as you're modifying the page and building the page, um, but up here uh, under this little menu, you can drop down and say, use as another user. And I can type in the name of the user. So I can say, oh, hey, I want to look at this. I've been tweaking, per I've been tweaking permissions. And I want to make sure that. I'm able to see, I, as the other person, as the external team, that I'm able to see the, the, the data that I need to see. It's always good to double check it to make sure that, like, even before you send it out, instead of sending it out to the external team and saying, here it is, go, and they're like, we can't see anything. What happened? Um, so it's always nice to, like, sanity check it and, and, log, and sort of fake login in someone else. It's, it's helpful. All right, so let's get into dailies. Um, so the mechanics of dailies, um, the things you have to consider. So we, uh, we the, I feel like the game, uh, Develop, game, game development sort of took this idea from, from film. Um, and we, you know, somewhere in the early 70s and 80s, the concept of film dailies is basically the, the concept is just reviewing the raw footage uh, and to see the, the, the progression of the, the project. And again, Shotgun helps with this a lot, you know, with the, with the review tools and the playlist that we just talked about. Um, but like, 
okay, so now you've got this software, you've got this thing on screen, then what? So like, who attends the meeting? So again, there is so many different versions of this that you need to consider, but it's, is it just the art directors? Is it the art directors and the art, and the art leads? Um, and then, like, who gives feedback? Who's the one holding the mic? Who's the one that's, that's sort of controlling the flow of the feedback? That's, it's very important things to consider. And it'll be different for each project um, that you're on. The next one is physical space. How and where is it reviewed? Do you have a proper room for this? Do you have enough seating for the people that you need? Do you have the, the, com the right computers to give feedback? Do you have something powerful enough to put it up on screen? Um, are you broadcasting it to other people and do they, you know, is that a consideration you need to take into account? Deliveries, how is there, how are people delivering the assets or the versions to Shotgun. Like, is there a, t is there a standardized template? Um, I always like to have, you know, up on, up on screen, up on the, on the template, like a standardized template for all of your assets, whether it's a movie or, or a still image. Um, but the, the phase delivery date, um, the, per the artist who did it, uh, the external team who did it, to, to start to sort of humanize the people that are, that are working on it. But again, it's about how, consider how these assets are gonna get into Shotgun. Uh, the next one is broadcasting feedback. And so this is the one I, I almost covered earlier, um, but this one is, su is super fun. So let's say we took a bunch of notes um, on all these different assets, and then and at the end of it, literally, so you could go through 50 assets and you're taking notes real time as, you're, as the art director is blowing through some uh, feedback, and all you have to do is hit send all notes, create summary email, you know, send it to who you you know send it to who you need to send it to. It's you can send it to your art directors. You can send it to the artists that are actually do, that have been doing the work, um, and it goes straight to them. So there is keep in mind there is some. This is a quick way to get through some feedback, but there is going to need to be some follow up afterwards. This is all going to be text. Um, all right, we are running way over, so I'm going to try to blaze through the rest. But this and again, it just makes it so easy. I've 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 seen situations where it's you can go so fast through you know, a whole bunch of assets, giving a quick review and getting people moving uh, and actioning on, on, uh, on, on the, you know, improving the asset. All right, next one. So what are the pros and cons of dailies? So I, I think it's, it's keep in mind, this is, it does have, a lot of <laughs> does have a lot of benefits. It's very, 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 very fast. <laughs> it's a quick rate of review, lots and lots and lots and lots of assets. Um, the cool part about this, and, and combine shotgun with the dailies process, it's a, it's a single stop for all the feedback and information you need. So even if you're gonna do markups after the fact, you then attach that to the submitted version and all the, the information the artist needs to continue their work is there. And it's great. And, it's a, and again, it's a quick way to get everyone aligned and get all the feedback out to the people who need it. So things to be careful about. So if you're gonna have a, a dailies, be careful of multiple dailies. Don't have too many, because sometimes they'll start to contradict each other. And that's, and you, you can get into a dangerous spot where it's, you know, wait, I got some feedback from this person that says do this, and when the second dailies came along, they didn't have, okay, cool. We're running out of time, so I'm gonna go through this a little bit quick. So just be careful of multiple dailies because you don't wanna contradict each other. Um, it's expensive. You got a room full of very talented people that are all, you know, you're paying lots of money, so be very careful with that. Uh, and again, feedback owners. In con if you have inconsistent feedback owners, that could be, it's a very, uh, Interesting, oppor dangerous opportunity to say, oh, well, the art director's giving feedback and then, uh, and then the art lead's giving feedback and all of a sudden they start to contradict themselves. So just be very careful about the, the feedback owners that you have in the room and, and be very clear about who's owning that process. All right, so let's, let's jump into like notes to pass Grayson. Like what, what can we take going forward? So again, I sort of talked about it already, but who's involved? Make sure you have the right people involved and a consistent point of, uh, point of feedback uh, for the external people and internal. When to submit. I don't, even though it's called dailies, I don't think you should, personally, I don't think you should submit, submit the assets every day. You should have the phases, the phase deliveries of your asset and deliver to those phases. Don't just deliver, oh, hey, here's the work that I did yesterday. Because I think from what I've seen, that just causes extra iteration. So I think it's a, it's a it, my, in my personal opinion, it's better to submit on, the, on phases. Hey, I'm done with textures, or I'm done with, you know, I'm 80% I'm done with uh, textures, I'm ready for some feedback. Don't just submit, oh, hey, this is the work on textures I did yesterday. It's just asking for more. I think it's good to record sessions um, so that you can, you can send it out to, to, to either the artist, they can listen to it again um, and sort of hear what the art director or art lead said. 
Another one is consider mics. You know, I, I've, there's, there's tons of different ways to set up mics. You can mic the whole room or you can have a single mic that, that, that gets passed around. I kind of lean towards the single mic approach because then it's, again, it's more like single point of, of feedback so that you can have discussions and you're not hearing that all on the mic. Ways to improve shotgun. Make sure you're onboarding people. It's a very, uh, you know, it's, it is a complicated piece of software. It is a very powerful piece of software. Make sure you're training up people, videos and documentation. Uh, asset submission, uh, make sure that you have a, you know, a standardized submission process. Make sure your, a, a, your external teams are able to get the assets in the shotgun. Um, Pre-filter. Uh, this is, uh, my, con my, my thinking here is I want someone to review the assets before it goes into dailies. Someone internal saying, hey, this is up to my standards. And then I want to put it in front of the art leads and art directors and everything like that. Don't just put everything in front of the art directors and art leads because, again, I think that increases iteration. Um, again, we're, we're tr the goal of it is to try to reduce iteration and try to speed things up. Um, again, keep an eye on event triggers. You know, notify people. You know, that way you can notify people about status changes, due date changes, all that sort of stuff. Because there's so much data in there, it's a good way. Event triggers help you um, to to parse that. And the last one is partner permissions. Um, make sure to nail that down, test it out, make sure that you that your all your partners can see what you need them to see um, before you roll out the stuff, before you roll out your your dashboards and everything to your external teams. And that's it, guys. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you.